In the last video, I covered the basics of how amateurs work and some very rudimentary rigging information. In this video, we're actually going to work on rigging a character. I already have a pre-made character base for this, which you can find in the description below. We can just jump straight in. So the first step in the rigging process is to create the deformation bones that will act as the foundation for all of the controls that we are going to have. They will be the only bones that will actively deform the mesh. No other bones aside from these should influence the mesh. Otherwise, we might end up creating some kind of John Carpenter body horror monstrosity. I'm going to begin by adding a single bone to the scene, and I'm going to place it exactly between the character's feet. Since the character's origin is precisely where I want the bone to go, I'll just use 3D cursor to place it there. And from here, I'm going to go into edit mode. I want this bone pointing forward on the y-axis, like the direction the character is facing. So I'm going to set my transform pivot mode to individual origins, and then rotate it by negative 90 degrees on the y-axis, like how I explained in the introductory video. Now that we've made a bone, it's very, very important that as we're working that we are labeling our work. Organization is key. Not only is it good for the rig, but it's also good for the workflow. By labeling things now, we can reduce our work by half later. To label a bone, I'm going to hit F2 and then I'm going to set the name of this bone to root. Now as I said in the previous video, the root bone shouldn't influence the mesh itself. It's merely the container for all the bones in the hierarchy. So to disable deformations for this bone, I'm going to select it, then hit Alt W and click Disable Deform. And while we're setting up, I'm also going to set the armature to show in front of the mesh. And for the mesh, I'm going to turn on wireframe mode so we can see the topology as we place the bones around the body. From here, I can work on adding the spinal bones. From the root bone at the center of the rig, I'm going to move my 3D cursor there and hit Shift A to add a new bone. And then I'm going to drag it up to the bottom of the waist. And from here, I'm going to extrude upwards, trying to recreate the natural curvature of the human spine. There were called bones without reason, it would be wise to reference actual human anatomy to follow when creating the spine. Unfortunately, we don't need all 24 vertebrae, we'll just keep it simple. For a simple spinal bone chain, I tend to have 5 bones in total, 3 of them being in the torso, one for the neck and one for the head. The torso will consist of 2 smaller abdominal bones and one larger chest bone, representing the rib cage, which is a much more rigid structure. And of course, we're going to name all of them. For the first 3 bones in the spine chain, I tend to just leave them as spine in whatever their numerical designation is, spine 1, 2, and 3. However, I do give the head and neck special recognition. And when we're done extruding the spine chain up, we should check from the front view as well to make sure we don't give our rig scoliosis. Next, I'm going to work on the arms. Right here at the top where the shoulder will begin, I will move the 3D cursor and add a bone here. And I'm going to adjust it so it looks like this. This is the clavicle bone of the rig, which will act as our shoulder. And when I label this bone, on top of giving it a name I can remember, I'm also going to give it a designator that tells me which side of the body that it's currently on. So after I type clavicle, I'm going to type in .l. This designator isn't just for organizational labeling. It actually has mechanical ramifications. So you need to include this designator if you want the rigging to go much easier for you. After placing the clavicle, I'm going to place the upper arm bone and then extrude to where the elbow should be. It's a good idea for your bone chains to have a slight bend to them. I find it helps with deformation and the bend is going to be essential if we're going to be setting up IK controls. So from the top, I'm going to move the elbow back just a little bit so there's a slight bend in the bone. And then from this bone, I'm going to extrude to where the hand would be. I label all of my bones to my preferred labels, upper arm, lower arm, and hand with their L designator. And finally, I'm going to set up the relationships. I'm going to set the upper arm L bone and set it as the child of the clavicle. And then I'm going to set the clavicle to be the child of the spine 3 bone. And these will be offset relationships, so we can still move them independently of each other. Now to do the leg bone chain. To start off, I'm going to place my 3D cursor here and make a new bone. This is going to be the pelvis bone. The pelvis bone, unlike the clavicle bone in the arm chain, isn't designed to move. The pelvis area is a rather rigid set of bones that aren't designed to bend, otherwise you might end up hurting your goodies. So I'm going to orient this bone like this, and from here, where my 3D cursor is now, I'm going to make the upper leg bone and begin to extrude it down. And in the process of extruding down, I'm going to be making the lower leg, the foot, and the toe bones, all with their L designators. And for the relationship setup, the upper leg is going to be offset to the pelvis. And for the pelvis, I'm actually going to be making a new bone for it to be parented to. I'm going to be making a hip bone, which is going to be our first control bone, which means that the sole purpose of this bone is to control and move other bones, and not to form the mesh. So to make the hip bone, I'm going to extrude from the top of the spine one bone and separate it by hitting Y on the keyboard. And then I'm going to disable the forms for this bone. And from here, I'm going to parent the pelvis to the hip. For this bone, I'm going to give it the prefix control with a hyphen. This to me designates it as a global control bone, which means it'll have influence over many different bone chains. I Ideally, the FK and the IK chain. There are many different kinds of naming conventions, and these are the ones that I've settled on for myself. 
All that matters is that you stay consistent and use names and prefixes that you can easily remember. And finally, we need to set up the relationship between the lower body, the upper body, and the root bone. And to do this, I'm gonna incorporate one last bone. I'm gonna make this new bone like I did the hip, except instead of extruding downward, I'm gonna extrude outward and then split it off. And I'm gonna place this bone about where the character's navel area would be. This bone will act as the center of gravity if ever I need to rotate the entire body at this point. And instead of calling it control center of gravity, I'm gonna shorten it to just control cog, which is much shorter. And with this final bone, I'm gonna finish up the hierarchy. The hips and the spine one bone are gonna be parented to the cog bone, and then the cog bone is gonna be parented to the root bone. And with that, we are now on the final stages of finalizing the deformed bones. Before we mirror everything over, we need to check for any unlabeled bones, just in case we missed any, and we need to check the bones' rotational axes to make sure they will bend in the way that we want them to. So like in the introductory video, I'm going to go into the armature settings tab and I'm going to enable axes so we can test and make sure that the x-axis is our primary rotational axis for any bone that we have. To start off, all of our spine bones should have a roll value of zero. This will ensure that our spine will bend forward when rotated on the x-axis. Next, for the shoulders. Its primary range of motion, I would argue, would be up and down. So for the clavicle, we want the x-axis to be the vector that raises and lowers the arm. So from the front view, I'm going to adjust the roll until it's parallel with the global axis. So that way when I rotate the clavicle on the x-axis in the local space, it'll raise and lower the arm. Now for the upper arm. Since the shoulder is doing the work of moving the arm up and down, this bone should do the work of moving it forwards and backwards. So I'm going to select the bone and I'm going to adjust the value until the x-axis is pointing straight down, which should be a value of about 90 degrees. And now while rotating the bone in the local space, it should rotate accordingly. The lower arm is going to follow the same roll value as the upper arm, however the wrist is going to have a different primary axis, since its main mode of movement is bending up and down. The roll value for the wrist is going to be perpendicular to the wrist of the arm, which in this case would be zero. Now that we're done with the spine and the arms, we can work on the legs. I'm going to start by setting the upper leg's rotational pull. I'm not going to worry about the pelvis bones since they aren't meant to be moved at all. I'm going to take the upper leg and I'm going to set its roll value to zero so that the x-axis is parallel with the global axis. I'm going to do this down the entire leg chain, but instead of copying the roll values and pasting it from bone to bone, I'm going to show you a way to do so with only a few button presses. First, we're going to select all the bones that we want to change, and then we're going to select the bone that we want to copy. Then hit Shift N and then select Active Bone, and this will automatically calculate the roll of the bones based off the actively selected one. As for the hip and the cog bone, the hip will share the same roll value as the spine, and the cog bone will share the same roll value as the root bone. Finally, now that we got it sorted out how the bones are going to transform, it's time to finish up the deform rig by symmetrizing our bones, which means to copy all of our bones from one side to the other. And this is fortunately a very painless step. That is, if we have been labeling our bones correctly. So to symmetrize our bones, all we gotta do is select all of our bones, go up here to the armatures menu, and go here to symmetrize. And just like that, we finished the rig. Well, at least the first part of it anyway. We can take our mesh now and bind it to see how the rig works. I modeled this character myself and I've tested it before, so I know that the automatic weighting is gonna do a fine enough job. However, you're probably not using these videos to rig my models. You're using this tutorial to rig your models. And you may find that the automatic weighting doesn't really work for you. And there are many reasons why that may be. First off, before you bind your mesh to the rig, you should make sure that all the transforms are applied and normalized for both the rig and the mesh. If your rig and mesh are centralized over the world origin point like this, select both your rig and mesh and hit Ctrl A to bring up the apply menu and apply all transforms. This will prevent strange transformations or deformations for your rig. On top of cleaning up and applying your transforms, it may also be possible that your mesh is too dirty to bind to the rig properly. If you didn't keep good maintenance of your mesh while modeling, you might end up with deformations like this. You want to make sure that your normals are all facing the right way. Normally you can do this just by hitting Alt N and hitting recalculate outside. Now the worst scenario that you can find yourself in is if you see this message when you bind your mesh. Bone heat waiting failed to find a solution for one or more bones. You want to make sure that you don't have any doubled vertices or accidental internal faces that might be causing problems. Select your mesh, hit Ctrl M, and click merge by distance to get rid of any doubled vertices. And for interior faces, go up to select and go to select by all trait menu, click internal faces and to delete those faces. 
On top of having clean topology, you also want to make sure that you have enough topology that is deformation ready, that it has enough loop cuts, and that it's designed with deformation in mind. If you look at my model at the elbows and knees, you can see that there are more loop cuts around the joints where the bones bend, so that way when they do bend, it looks more natural. And the final possibility for why the automatic weighting isn't working the way that you want it to, it could just be that the automatic weighting just sucks for your model. It's not your fault, it just doesn't know how the best way to handle it. Those are some of the best tips that I can give about troubleshooting your rigging process without diving straight into weight painting, which is something that I do not want to discuss in this series. Making the rig is going to be complex enough for people who are new to the idea, and I don't want to crush your souls with weight painting. At least not yet. In the next video, we'll be looking into some more features of armatures, layer groups, and constraints. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. For more notifications, you can follow me on Twitter where I make announcements and post art. I also try to stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30pm when I can. If not, you will know about it on Twitter if I make an announcement about it. I also have a Discord and subreddit where I hang out and chat about art, 3D modeling, and animation stuff. If you want to support me financially, which will help me make future tutorials, I have a Ko-Fi page. I don't like to advertise my Ko-Fi page because it kind of just feels like I'm begging. But I am planning to put up free downloadable content content on there, so that way if you want free 3D assets, you can go and download them there. Be sure to check those links out, all of which are in the description below, and really, that's all I have to say. See ya.